Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about one of my favorite fighters. And everything I say in this video should be construed as my opinion. Okay, I'm not making any statements of fact. Right, let's talk about one of my favorite fighters. Antonio Tarver. Now, as many of you may have heard, Antonio Tarver, according to reports, tested positive for a performance enhancing drug, a steroid. Now, according to Victor Conti, as reported by the website BoxingScene.com, the drug that Antonio Tarver is reported to have tested positive for just happens to be one of the few steroids that actually allows you to not gain water, not gain weight. In other words, it just happens to be the perfect kind of steroid that a boxer who needs to weigh no more than a certain amount at the weigh-in would take to improve his performance but to also make the weight limit. Now I understand that Antonio Tarver is disputing the test results. And I understand that there's a protocol where there's an A sample and then there's a B sample. There's an initial test and then there's a subsequent test. But let me just say that when Floyd Mayweather years ago talked about there being a possible drug problem in the sport and asking that his opponents submit to performance enhancing drug tests before a fight, who knew then that in a span of just a few months, as testing is barely adopted in the sport, and by testing I mean more sophisticated testing than the urine tests that seem to be allowed in states like the state of Nevada here in the United States, now that we've moved into USADA and VADA, testing where fighters like Nonino Denier are now voluntarily submitting to tests 12 months throughout the year whether he's fighting or not who would have guessed that as we move toward testing that so many fighters in publicized fights would either somehow despite contractually required testing miss a drug test or if you believe reports not complain when the authorities don't show up to take the drug test in the case of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. against Marco Antonio Rubio or just fail tests outright whether for synthetic testosterone Lamont Peterson or more traditional steroids, Andre Berto, right? And now, of course, we're moving into the newfangled steroid that doesn't have your body gain water mass in the case of Antonio Tarver, right? It's stunning. Keep in mind that the only guys submitting to more advanced testing are the guys, the few, at the upper reach of the sport those in high-profile televised championship fights, right? Antonio Tarver apparently failed the test that was conducted in conjunction with his fight with Latif Coyote. Now let's think about that fight for a second, right? And I know I picked Tarver to win that fight here online. The fight ended in a draw. Understand if Antonio Tarver won any of 
the rounds because of performance enhancing drugs any of the rounds that tipped the result of the fight the fight wouldn't have been a draw Latif Coyote would have nicked him so we need to get serious in boxing we need to point out whenever an elite fighter even a guy who until now has been viewed as a role model he's certainly a role model for me Antonio Tarver even when an Antonio Tarver fails a drug test we need to point that out I know I got comments from many of you there on my post fight video for the Chavez Jr. Rubio fight where people thought I was picking on Chavez Jr. who hadn't even failed a drug test for that fight for not being tested as required after the fight well let me just say you know you should know that Chavez Jr may have failed an earlier test for a diuretic, right? Take a look at his history as reported online, right? And of course, Chavez Jr. in a fight after the Rubio fight beat Andy Lee after again gaining something like 20 pounds after the weigh-in. And of course there, Andy Lee's people were a bit concerned because of course Andy Lee was winning that fight before he got hit with the type of punches he had not been hit with up until that point. Andy Lee's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, very influential in boxing. You may know him as the trainer for world heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko. Stewart, who has been in the game for as long as I have been alive, thought something was not on the up and up, and even he inquired into making sure that Chavez Jr., took the required drug tests, right? Bob Arum claimed he did. I don't know what the outcome of that is, but my point to you is people who have been in the game a long time are looking at some of these athletes and they're raising questions, right? Victor Conti has made the point that many of these athletes might be micro-dosing. It really has reached a point where you look at a fighter in his late 30s, before a big fight, the guy looks in better shape than he has in several years, and for legal reasons, even in this video, I can't even mention his name. But yet, of course, in the pre-fight hype, in the 24-7 show on HBO, they point out that his nutritionist, is someone who, of course, was linked with Trevor Graham years ago and who may have in the past been a witness in blood doping and PED cases, right? And so let's call out, let's draw a light to failed drug tests, missed drug tests, or clouded drug test results as I'm doing here in this video on Antonio Tarver. I hope Tarver is 100% innocent. I'd like to think the sport is 100% clean. But is it? What did it take for Lamont Peterson to admit that he had taken synthetic testosterone? Didn't it take the failed test result and then of course we're learning about the failed test result after Peterson squeaks out literally squeaks out a title win over Amir Khan right so let's keep an eye on this in a book I wrote in 1989 it's available on Amazon I hope that's a shameless transparent plug but in a book I wrote, I have made the argument that we should always question older athletes who suddenly, after being 10, 20, 30 pounds overweight, 
are somehow able to lose weight, come down in weight, to make weight for a fight. I've argued that those athletes sometimes lose stamina as the fight goes on. And that, you know, betters need to consider just how fit the fighter is between fights, as well as how much weight the guy has to lose to make weight. I think it's really an ongoing story in boxing right now as to how successful many of these older fighters have been of late. And you need to keep track of the pattern in their fights. It's really interesting, and I don't know whether he did steroids or not, but it is interesting that Antonio Tarver lost the early rounds against Latif Coyote and was able to get the draw by winning the later rounds, right? That's a bit unusual since Tarver is in his 40s, right? I don't believe for a second that every fighter in their 40s or every fighter over 35 is juicing. I don't believe that. Uh, I believe, rightly or wrongly, for example, that Bernard Hopkins is clean. But let me just say, I think fans need to openly discuss when a fighter has a questionable test result, right? And let me also point out, too, that we've reached the point in sports where lie detector tests would not be conclusive. Because, of course, these fighters have entourages. These fighters now have euphemistically named strength coaches. These fighters are drinking drinks, protein shakes, supposedly, where they can't tell you what's in the drink. The strength coach isn't even an employee of the trainer. The strength coach is an independent contractor. We have had situations where famous strength coaches curiously are getting fired by world championship fighters shortly before their world championship fights. We even have situations where very well-known promoters, and again, I'm not naming names, you just do the research on Google, very well-known promoters are, you know, trying to ban certain strength coaches from events, right? If the situation seems fishy, it's because it is fishy Let's all keep an eye on the official test results, especially before big fights. Because if we don't, what we do is we run the risk of having very close championship fights. Right? Khan Peterson. Right? Coyote Tarver. Very close fights where after the fight, we hear about a failed drug test and we're left to wonder whether or not any enhanced performance tipped the outcome of the fight. World titles hang in the balance. Rankings hang in the balance. The future. Planned fights hang in the balance. Too much hangs in the balance for us to just see a story and to not talk about it make a video about it, comment on it, etc. Let's all keep an eye on the B sample and the result of the Antonio Tarver test. Uh, keep in mind, Tarver wants to fight for the heavyweight championship. I think he would be an excellent opponent for the heavyweight championship. One of the more credible opponents for the heavyweight championship. Um, the problem here, though, is whether or not a strength coach gave him something that gave him an unfair edge or what have you, uh, whether or not he's put himself in a position for that heavyweight title shot in a credible, legitimate manner. We might find out shortly. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us 
at gamblersadvisory.com and theboxinggame.blogspot.com. Let me also say this too, and I don't say it lightly. Do your research. Of the heavyweight champions right now, one of them was deemed ineligible for his country's Olympic team because he failed a drug test, right? And so in boxing, the only thing that you know with certainty is that there are very few Boy Scouts, at least there seem to be very few Boy Scouts, when you have testing for championship fights. I applaud the fighters. I applaud Nanito Denier. I applaud the fighters who voluntarily agree to testing for their championship fights and who actually show up to be tested. Right? Just understand that those guys remain in the minority in the sport. Thanks for watching.